I'm most interested in galaxies, so the big stuff far away. Um, and I like um, studying collisions of galaxies or interactions, where basically you have um, two galaxies or multiple galaxies sort of passing each other and they lose energy and then at the end they merge, form a big one. That's what's going to happen with, most likely, with the Milky Way galaxy and our neighboring galaxy, the Andromeda. How long have we got before? Ah, don't worry. I use a spectrograph, a certain spectrograph, that is mounted to the VLT, the Very Large Telescope in Chile. Now, this instrument, as any other instrument, has mistakes, you know. Uh, you need to get rid of them in order to do science. So, what the astronomer does is, he or she takes calibration data to um, have the most perfect image in the end where you, can do, where you can do science with. So, in this calibration frame, you can see um, what I mean when I say measuring mistakes because it's all about these um, dead pixels or here we've got a whole row of pixels that are clearly not working the way it should be or all the, um, so the, the wavy bits on the side. That's all a mistake that we, we don't want in there. The fact that I use the mistakes is, or that this instrument has mistakes is very human. Everyone has mistakes. We all relate to it, None, no one is, is free of, of them. So it's a way in to something that you would normally don't understand. When I was 12 years old, um, my dad took me to California. We went to see Mount Paloma, which was for a long time the uh, largest telescope in the world. So there I am, pressing my nose against the window and and they had a little um, shop next to it. And I bought a pack of slides with photographs of the universe, of, of nebulae and, and galaxies and great stuff. And then I used it to give presentations at school. And, and my teacher's like, I don't think people know what hydrogen is. <laughs> you know, explain. <laughs> and um, I was always fascinated by just the beauty of the night sky. And that's how it, how it started. There is a communication problem between science and society, between humanities and science and art and science, and it's been going on for a long time. It's these two cultures that, that don't understand each other. I mean, both science and art are trying to explain the world. It's just different kinds of doing so. So the data is, is taken in Chile. From, from ESA the very, and, and their very large telescope. And, and I get the data and it's, well that's obviously just ones and zeros. So once I get the frame from the reduction process, I changed it in Photoshop the way I think um, I want it to look like um, aesthetically. So this is um, my doing at the end. I add the artificial colors. Um, then I have a bunch of test um, shots and I basically let the printer do, do the work. This is one of the examples for the test pieces that I do to optimize the color that I want. And you can see the differences in, in the colorings and this I go back and forth, back and forth many times until I get what I want. If you use Printing techniques, anyone, even silkscreen printing, Andy Warhol style or whatever, you need to be able to let go because you're not the one painting with the brush onto the canvas. It's a machine that does it for you. I started by painting these and it's not the right way to say what I want to say. So this clearly stretches the boundaries of what's um, contemporary art or what is art. There are so many catastrophes in, in science and mathematics, which is the language a scientist uses. I mean, you can't divide by zero. 
There is no maximum number. You can never reach infinity. Science has so much to do with, with playing games, as, as does art. You need to be creative for both. Because in the end, the creativity that you know, creates art also is the creativity you need for science. You have all these building blocks underneath, you know, and you sort of want to create a new one on top of that. So you have an idea of what's out there, but the one thing that makes it new, you have to come up with. So creativity is, a, is very important. How do you decide if a painting is good or not, or whether it's ready or not? Um, it's, I think it's uh, like, like when you paint with a brush, you just know <laughs> when it's done and then you have to find the right moment to say, all right, that's it. <laughs>